Hey guys, it's middle of January and everybody's big question is always, what does Aquascape Construction do in the winter time? What happens after Thanksgiving? Well, this time of year, it's usually pretty cold. You can see it's kind of snowing. I don't know if you see it or not. It's definitely cold. It's been about negative five the last two weeks or so. It's actually warmed up a little bit to allow some flurries. But this time of year, we do a lot of service calls. Um, believe it or not, a lot of our customers here in the Midwest and the Chicago area move down to Florida and they wanna make sure that their ponds are looking good. And so they'll have us come out either for a week or so checking up on their ponds sometimes it's for the entire winter sometimes it's just when it gets brutally cold and i thought we'd start off by kind of taking you around on some of our rounds and the first place we're going to stop by is my house and show you a little bit how my winter wonderland looks back here if we come down here you can see this big giant dome of ice i installed this urn early last summer and it doesn't look a whole lot like a slate urn right now but when you look at this big giant block of ice you can tell that there's something underneath this. I took this can of water from the side of the house and I thought I'd pour it over the top and see if we can't see a little bit more. <laughs> oh, look at that. You can definitely see the water still bubbling away underneath. What this tells me is a couple things, that I still have plenty of water down in my reservoir to allow the pumps to still operate. You wouldn't know it, but I've also got a very big waterfall right here. <laughs> it's underneath. A big giant block of ice. You never know it was a waterfall unless you were standing where I was and you could actually hear the water running underneath this entire block of ice. This is actually what I'm looking for in the winter, this big block of ice. What happens now is this huge chunk of ice has actually created a barrier between the cold air and the water, insulating the water running underneath of it. The worst thing in the world for me to do would be come out here, bust up this ice and expose that water to cold air again. When that happens, I just create more ice, which then ultimately depletes from my water source down below. I wouldn't suggest doing this at home, but right now I'm gonna be walking across my pond. Whoa, bad idea, bad idea. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> you can see though, the ice is still pretty thin there. Now I've created a problem. <laughs> As you can see this water now moving underneath all this, if I don't open this up a little bit more, all of this water is gonna come up on top of this. You can see it happening now. As this water comes up on top of this ice, it actually gets up on top of all the ice down here and not down into where my pumps are sitting. At this point, my pond is considered to be leaking. So we're gonna to have to fix that. So you can see the problem that I occurred that you saw. When I stepped over here, a bunch of these ice chunks actually formed a dam. As it formed a dam, it raised the water level up higher than that initial cast of ice that was put here. So right now, all of that water is coming up on top of the ice formation down here, not getting down to my pump. So I'm gonna do a couple things. The first thing I did is I opened up a hole here. This is allowing that water to get down into where my pumps sit in my rainwater harvesting system. The second thing I'm gonna do is try to attempt to move a bunch of these ice chunks under the, out of here, get back underneath. You can see how much I slowed that water from going up on top of the ice compared to now going underneath it. I think if I open up a few more pieces, I'll be alright. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Got that water back and underneath. So I've also got another waterfall over here. This is actually the main filter to my pond. It's a big bog filter and it comes through a bunch of different basalt columns. This is actually still running too and you would never know it because of the enormous amount of ice on there. But the same thing, if I stand right next to it, I can hear that water actually moving underneath. The other thing I've got, you can kind of see where this water is formed here a little differently. I've got a big bubbler underneath here and you can see that water moving around underneath there. It's so cold that the bubbler finally froze solid and you can just see those air bubbles forming underneath all of that stuff. 
but I'm looking to keep my pond open in the winter. It's really for one reason. I got to keep a hole open in the ice for one reason, and it's to keep the fish alive. It allows oxygen and stuff to come back in, and more importantly, gases to escape. If the pond were to ever completely freeze over, the fish can actually suffocate. All of those gases that get built up underneath the ice can't escape. As they start decomposing, they use up the usable oxygen in the water, and the fish literally suffocate over the winter. So it's super important that you keep a big hole open. My favorite way to do that is not by letting the waterfalls run, because you saw what happened when we did that. Not by letting your bog filter run. Not by the aerator, because in negative 25 degree temperatures, even that can freeze over. Over here, I've installed some jets. And jets are kind of a complex way to keep a pond open. A much more easy way than jets is just using one of our Aquaforce pumps. Putting it in over here, I like using the one that pushes at least 3,500 gallons per hour. As long as that water is constantly agitating and constantly moving, you can keep a big giant hole open. In this case, kind of a heart-shaped hole. One of the worst things that could happen in the winter would be your pond starts losing water. And your pond will lose water because water is turned into ice, depleting from the source down below. So if you need to add water to your pond, it's so, so important that you have a garden hose ready and available to come out there. Leaving a garden hose outside, thinking that this isn't frozen solid, is a big mistake. So I always like to bring a different garden hose with me, something that I've kept inside the truck or something I've kept inside our office that's warm and very collapsible. All right, let's go look at another pond and see how theirs is running. Off to the next one. So we're heading to our next stop. This is one of our routine stops. Um, we check on this pond once a month, or unless it gets really cold, and it'll have us come out um, once a week. And so it's been really cold for a while. Um, a bunch of us were on break, and so this is the first time we're seeing it in uh, two weeks. He's got a couple urns that he said he shut down himself. He's got a couple waterfalls he said he pulled the pumps, and we're just making sure he did everything right. Um, he's got some expensive fish down in there, and so we just want to reassure that those fish are looking good, um, that there's an adequate hole open in the pond, so oxygen can get in, gases and stuff can escape. I also want to double check and make sure he pulled those pumps correctly. Uh, if he leaves those pumps in, especially with the check valves on, you worry about the check valves cracking in this frigid weather. You can also, every now and then, get a problem with the, um, the pipe cracking. Uh, we don't see the pipe crack too often. Uh, the pipe is freeze tolerable. The, flexible PVC pipe we use will actually expand and contract with the freezing weather but every now and then we'll see a pipe burst and that's usually because um, the check valve was left on and uh, the water couldn't get out of the pipe so let's go see what we've got back here and uh, hope everything looks good so we're at our second stop here this is a longtime customers of ours and to be honest when I first walked up to this I was a little concerned you can see that he's got an urn right here you can see there's another urn in the back and what you can't see is there's actually a third urn that frames out a waterfall over there. This is actually a picture on one of our catalog. What got me concerned is I didn't see anything moving. If nothing's moving, that means nothing's open. If everything's closed up, then that oxygen can't get in and the gases can't escape. But as I got closer, you can see he's got his bubbler run in here. And so I'd like to see that a little bit bigger than what I see now. And obviously what's operating that is a skimmer box over here. You can see how low his water level is in his pond. This is really, really concerning to me because if the water level is that low and it's feeding a pump inside of there, very soon that pump's going to start starving out. So let's go check that skimmer box and see what's going on. So obviously one of my biggest concerns with this pond in the winter is how much the water level has dropped. And I can see it right away based off of my skimmer opening. The water is supposed to be all the way up above this screw or at least level with it. So it's down a good 10, 12 inches. When that happens, the water coming inside of our skimmer box doesn't keep up with how much water is being pumped out to feed his jets over here. So we really, really gotta get water in this pond or get some heaters or stuff in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave him this uh, floating de-icer. I'm really concerned with the way the water level is. If he can't get water back out to this pond, that pump's gonna have to get shut down. If the pump gets shut down, then this will all freeze. So this will definitely keep a hole open in the pond until we can get things figured out. So I'll leave them this. I'm also gonna leave them my garden hose. This is my trusty little garden hose. It doesn't freeze, it expands and contracts really low. He's obviously left all his stuff outside, so if he needs something, he can use this one as well. He's a long time customer, I have no problem leaving him that stuff. So another option, if he doesn't wanna use the heater, is this Aquaforce pump. 
This is that 3500 or 3600 one I was talking about. What he'll do is disconnect the pump that's inside the skimmer box or have us do that for him. Go ahead, take this pump out of the box, set it down on this shallow shelf, plug it in, and it works as a aerator or, or a jet just in this area. The nice thing about this pump is it has this screen built around it. So there's no way fish or debris or anything else can ever clog the pump. Um, so I'll give him a call and uh, we'll hope for the best. Back to Aquascape. So guys, uh, hope you enjoyed our typical day in January here at Aquascape Construction. Look forward to next week where we'll be going over a whole lot of other stuff and uh, maybe some more of the same. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions, make sure you throw those in the comment section. We'd love to get back to you and hear uh, some feedback from you guys. All right, see you next week.